Well, it's middle of May 2017. I'm back down by the river, and it's really great to see a change, even in a month. I was down here roughly a month ago, and, and suddenly there's foliage everywhere. And I'm with uh, my friend Heather, who knows a little bit more about flora than I do. So, um, Heather, come and let's have a look at, I mean, what these amazing flowers. I, I'm colorblind, so I really don't know much about them. Um, so this one here is called Jack in the Hedge. If you take a leaf, let's take a leaf and scrunch it up, you might be able to smell, have a smell. Can you smell anything? To be honest, no. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Let sorry. Me have a sniff. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it does smell a little bit of um, garlic, not as much as wild garlic, mm. um, but it's it's actually uh, has a kind of mustardy flavour. Uh, flavour to it. So you can you can add that to your food, it's edible. Okay, let's come this way, let's go up this little pathway a bit and point out anything of interest, Heather, as we... Okay, now here. stinging nettles, some people hate them because they sting, uh, but they're Too actually right. really useful because two, two things, um, firstly you can make twine out of them. Oh. So the if you carefully pick them, and then dry them out and I'm not exactly sure of the um, technique but then you can make string and secondly they're really good for gardeners because you can uh, use them in your um, compost tea or you can make what's called a weed tea um, which you then use as a fertilizer a um, natural fertilizer so what have we got here uh, I don't know what these plants are but, but they're I'll kind of wild up. flowers are they or? <laughs> yes of course the major um, plant here is the Himalayan balsam which is a kind of invasive plant but I, I yet to uh, discover which one it is but there's a pheasant again well could this be the Himalayan balsam maybe yeah oh really could be they well, say it's this, very yes I think this might be it they say it's very pretty yes this may well be it and it has to be cut within a pretty short time frame before the um, the seeds um, disseminate in the wind and that's how it's so invasive right, yeah. mm -hmm. then... they're the ones that pop aren't they i think so yeah, yeah. and then um, here this is a colloquially known as sticky weed because it sticks to you oh yeah um, but it's actually useful uh, firstly it's edible so you can it's not it's a bit hairy so it's not the best right. but it's really good for these glands here. There's, it's got two seeds when it's developed. At the moment it doesn't have them because it's not the right time of the year. But there's two seeds on either side. Yeah. And that's a hint to what it does. So are these plants actually used then med medicinally? In the past, yes, they were used a lot medicinally. So, um, I don't know what they're called, herbalists, that's it, uh, would certainly use them uh, and they have a, it's quite a training to learn what what plants do what for which part of the body. Okay, right, let's carry on our little journey mm -hmm. and pick out anything that looks interesting. Um, so it's well, quite we've, a... Yep, we've got um, black uh, brambles, so they have, of course, their fruit, which you can eat, but they're also yeah. very difficult to get rid of if you don't want them. So there's quite a variety here, is there? Yep, uh, here's some bracken, uh, which is um, unfortunately can't eat it because it's carcinogenic. Um. Mm. And then of course we've got the river here. And now we're, we've got a lot of this. If this is the um, invasive weed then... Yeah, it grows quite high I think. Yeah. So... Um, well known because if you do this you can find out if you like butter but unfortunately the buttercup is toxic so you can't really? use it. Really? Mm -hmm. To what to humans? Sure I used to eat them when I was a kid. Oh dear. Maybe that explains a lot. <laughs> really? Uh, I used to know what that is. Do you know much about trees Heather? Um, a little bit so 
Tell me about these um, bits of growth that entwine. Is it best to kind of remove it? Um, well, is, there are two schools. Is this invasive? For that. So one school is that, yes, they are um, damaging the tree. But um, part of the reason that people think this is because they see a tree, a tree that's dying. Notice it's covered in, in the um, I, in, uh, ivy. And then think, OK, the ivy is killing the tree. But actually, ivy is an opportunistic plant. So it notices when the tree dies, it will grow much more to take advantage of the fact that now um, the tree has no leaves, so it's much better for it. Mm. Um, so it may slightly make it quicker to die off, but is that necessarily a bad thing if the tree's on the way out? I don't know. <laughs> Have you come across this before? Um, I think that's a Canis Maximus. Maximus? He looks quite minimus to me. He's quite <laughs> short leg. <laughs> I think you're probably right. You might Squirrel, be watch minimus. you don't fall in. <laughs> hey, boy. Of course, yours is a world of smells, isn't it? Hey? He loves it. Ooh! That is an interesting one. As a budding uh, forager, I might spot this plant and think, hmm, it looks like wild parsley, and decide to eat it. This would be fatal because this Which is one? this plant here. I'm not going to touch it because it's very really? toxic. It's, it is probably the most toxic plant in Britain. It's called hemlock water dropwort. It's often next to rivers. Bloody hell, I'm glad I invited you down. Might never have made it back. Um, and uh, it's actually responsible for the sardonic grin. So if you eat this plant, it causes the muscles to contract such yeah. that you end up with this grin on your face as you die. You're it's joking. Quite have you nice. experienced it? Have you no. seen it? <laughs> I've, I've never... Um, Would my dog eat it accidentally? I hope not. Um, Does it give off an odour? That's one of the problematic things about this plant is that it actually tastes fairly bland. But um, who would want to? Actually, I could have confused that with celery. Exactly. But yeah. I'd have had to have been half drunk. Yeah, it, to... it, it's a, in fact, recently there were um, a few people who um, put it in some curry. So they thought. Crikey. That, they thought it was parsley or something. And that's the same plant there. So should I be cutting it down, do you think? Well, it's up to you because now you know not to eat it. And it, as long as you make sure that your dog's safe. It might be better just to leave things be. Okay. Because, um, yeah, they're the great fun. <laughs> it's a shame they're invasive. So here we have hogweed. Uh, it's part of the umbilifer family, which is, contains things like carrots and parsnips and things like that. But it's a very difficult um, family when it comes to foraging because some of them are deadly toxic and some of them are lovely. This one happens to be one you can eat. You have to cook it but it's fine to eat. There's one that looks extremely similar to this uh, that's called giant hogweed and this one just touching it can cause blisters on your skin. Good grief. So what actually does foraging mean? Um, collecting stuff from the wild I guess. And feral because I've come across feral woodies in Australia. They go around and make a sculpture out of um, found wood on the beach mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. Feral? Wild? No. Um, Is that what feral means? Wild? Yeah, well, feral actually means um, something that was tamed and then has been released. Oh. Like, like feral dogs. Yes. Are ones that we had and then they've gone yeah. loose. So you could touch that and get a blister, is that what you're saying? Uh, not this one, because this is almost certainly just hogweed, but it yeah. looks very similar and I'm actually not yet good enough to be able to tell for certain. Most of it is hogweed, but if you do touch the wrong one, obviously, then it's sunlight that does it. So you, if you wash your hands before you get exposed to sunlight, then you'll be okay. Um, so over here we have um, wild parsley which is edible but there's another plant that looks extremely similar to, the, similar to this um, but it's called hemlock and is extremely toxic so the only ways that you can tell are by looking at the uh, the main way that you can tell is by looking at these stems because this is rough whereas the hemlock plant will be smooth and have blotches on it 
but generally I would suggest never eating um, anything where you're not 100% and more sure that it's okay. Um, so we've got quite a lot of wild got garlic which is great. It smells like garlic and you can even eat the flowers. The flowers are like a little hotbed of um, garlic flavour. Great to put in your salad. Um, there is one toxic plant which looks a little bit like this but you can tell the difference as soon as you have a sniff because this has the garlic. Well this reminds me of my childhood when we lived in the country um, near the River Dove in Derbyshire and I used to go down to the river with my two sisters and we had this ship uh, which actually was a clump of trees in the middle of the river and in fact it was very much like this <laughs> and on our ship if you imagine that the river was really fast running and I'd be halfway up one of the trees and I'd be saying land ahoy, land ahoy and my older sister Jill would say quick we're late for dinner or late for lunch and it was a stark contrast of our fantastic rural freedom but our terrible fear of domesticity that if we were late for lunch we'd get a meeting from my father so this was our world, our world was down by the river and I hear the wonderful sound of the wind going through the trees. It just evokes all these uh, childhood memories of freedom and being uh, engaging in nature. Well, I have to confess, I don't know much about trees looking at them from the outside. Um, I tend to know the inner world of trees uh, once they're cut into planks and I can see the grain and the figure and I can make furniture from it and even um, and even the uh, bird hide that I'm uh, making here. Of course it probably seems very corny but um, I do occasionally hug trees because I consider them to be uh, my friends and uh, they have sustained me for much of my working life. Yeah, so trees. Um, and my philosophy regarding my work is that if I'm using a tree that, say, took 150 years to grow, because a mature ash tree was in that diameter, take that long, I want my furniture to be last at least as long as that tree took to grow. And that's something to kind of hand down. It's an idea. I mean, who knows, 150 years, the state of the world at the moment is quite a long time ahead. Are you filming me? I have got a bloody great salmon on here. Oh, this is a real big one. 